Hey, what's up guys? Mr. Lidke here. Today, we are going to talk about statistics and how we represent data. Okay, what is statistics? Statistics is collecting data and analyzing numbers to make inferences about any specific group. Now, today, what we're going to talk about are how do we collect data and how do we display it or make it so that other people can see the data and interpret it easily. The first thing we're gonna talk about is collecting data. Now, the important thing to understand is that there's two types of data that we're gonna use for our purposes. The first type is called first-hand data. Now, first-hand data is data that you collect yourself. Makes sense, first hand, one hand, my own hand, I am collecting data myself. So that's first hand data. Now, the other type of data that we can use or analyze, which is also very common in terms of statistics, is called second hand data. Now, second hand data is data that is collected by someone else, which makes sense as well if you think about it. Second hand, two hands, that's another hand collecting the data instead of you yourself. What are some situations in life that we can think about where we are using data or looking at statistics. What na right now what's going on with all of these things, social distancing, the coronavirus, COVID-19, every day on the news you'll see the new statistics, how many people have it, how many people are recovered, and all those other things. Those numbers are statistics. Now, where can we find statistics? Where can we find, uh, where can we find secondhand data? Secondhand data can be found on the internet or in newspapers. We could use encyclopedias because they have a lot of information and data. And here's one that a lot of people have found over the years to be quite enjoyable, hockey cards. I myself collected a lot of hockey cards and I love looking on the back and seeing how many goals Wayne Gretzky scored each year throughout his career. That's data that's collected and organized so that we can see how Wayne Gretzky's performance was over those years that he played hockey. Now that we've talked about how we collect data or what kind of data it is that we're working with, remember, if I collect the data myself, that's first-hand data. If somebody else collects the data that I'm using, that's second-hand data. Now, what do we do with the data that's been collected? Well, we're going to put it in what's called a data table. I'm going to say that I've collected this data. So what I've done is I've created a survey, I've put all my options on it, and I've asked grade five students, how do they get to school in the morning and get home after, at the end of the school day? So I have my data table labeled grade five students. I've got the method of travel, and then I've got number of students. So what would this would have looked like is I would have gone around to the grade five students and I would have asked them class by class, how do you get to school? And I would have tallied up using uh, a chart of some kind or a tracking device on how to get the information. Now, I've got the information and I've put it in my table so that it's organized. So how many people have taken a bicycle to school? Well, 10 of the grade five students that I surveyed took a bicycle to school or rode a bicycle. Um, 36 of the students that I surveyed came on the bus. 26 came by car and their parents. I'm sure they didn't drive themselves. Who knows? Probably not, but I'm guessing not. And 31 walked. And then there's four others. Now, that could have been a skateboard or a scooter or they parachuted in. I don't know. Okay. But that's what happens after I've taken my survey and I've comp compiled all of the results 
into my table. This could have also been a table that I found in a textbook, or it could have been a table that I found online. Um, generally, if I'm thinking about bigger uh, things that I want to survey, like let's say, for example, how many lighthouses are in Canada? I have no idea. And it would be very hard for me to travel around and document all the lighthouses. But there could be information like that online that I could search and I could find out exactly how many lighthouses there are in Canada. Then I could organize them by province. I'm sure there's less in Alberta than there are in Nova Scotia. Maybe not. I don't know. I'd have to research that. Okay. But what we are looking at right now, like I said, is firsthand data that I've collected myself. I've labeled my data table and I've included the um, data, the statistics in my table. Let's see what we do next with the data that we have in the table. Now that we've looked at how the data is organized, what do we do with it? Well, in this case, we're just gonna use the data to answer a few questions that we might have about this group of people. So the first question, how many students walk to school? Well, we can clearly see from our data, we find walk and we go across and we found that we have 31 students that walk to school. The next question is, what is the most popular way for our students to get to school? Well, I'm looking at my numbers over here and the biggest number is 36 and I go across and it looks like the bus is the most popular way that kids are getting to school. So why do we collect data? Well, it's to find out information about a specific group of people that we're interested in. In this case, we wanted to find out how the grade five students got to school in the morning and went home at the end of the day. I collected the data, so that's first-hand data. If I had found this information somewhere else, that would be second-hand data. What we're gonna do next is look at how do we organize the data in a different way that makes it easy for people to see what's going on with those different statistics.